I just wanna stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder cause they treat me like an outcast. I ain't gonna take that, stay back, I'll be swinging on. Alright guys, welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Today, I got a real treat. Number one, I got a guy who's a badass. I got a guy going through total recreation. I got a guy that's got a killer business. I got a guy that's done more than anyone ever thought he could do. I got a guy that's got two badass brothers, right, and they're kicking ass with him. And they got amazing wives and families. I've got a guy here that's like my brother that I'm going to introduce. His name is Joey. And what I love about this guy is he's just like every single one of you. But he's making a lot of money. And he's changing a lot of lives. And you know what I love the most? Is he's, he's, in a, he's, in a, he's in a journey in his life to change his life yet again. Total recreation. And he's about to go do some big stuff. But a lot of you out there, you want to build value in your life, you want to build value in other people's lives, you want to make a lot of money, you want to know how to do it. So there's two things. I always say, who's going to get you there and then how are you going to get there? Okay, Joey's going to bring the heat today. He's going to tell you guys how you can get to your next level in life and then who, the type of people you'll need to be around to get to that next level in your life. So Joey, I'm going to introduce you for a minute, but I kind of want you to start because we, we know each other, car business, right? He runs automotive dealerships. He's an owner of automotive dealerships. But I, I want to go, and I want I want to start at this place, and then you can back down to when you were young, sure. and then go up. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. I want you to start at 18 years old when your dad died. I want you to start there. Okay. 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 Because a lot of people, things happen, and they're they're hard, and people shut down. Okay. So I'm going to go to a really tough place in your life. Your dad dies. Right. Talk to me. What happens? Uh, my dad, my dad died, um, your senior year, my senior year in high school, I was 18. And, you know, at that point in time, you know, there was, you know, family estate, everything ripped apart. So, you know, and this wasn't necessarily a, a sophisticated planning, right? So there was definitely pressure right away, uh, financially. And, you know, I had my younger brothers and my mom and I was like, you know what, I got to do something. I got to start making money, right? Like I have to go in there. So my uncles were in the car business. I was living in Ohio. My uncles were in the car business in Virginia. I had already wanted to be in the car business. Um, from an early age, I knew right along, right away that um, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I knew that from the time I was 10. I knew from the time I was 14, 15 that I wanted to own car dealerships. That was just, I saw that. But do you have any money at this point? No. Okay, no. good. So let's, let's, let's make sure that we talk about that because you don't have any money, right? But you're dreaming big. You're thinking big. Some of you guys right now, you don't have to be 14. You don't have to be 18. You could be 50 years old watching this. Are you thinking about doing something? Is that dream going to just sit in your head and you're never going to execute? What I like is that you took action. So you got these dreams. And the action part will be the action part will be fun. So let me try to move it along because to go there. So I'm 18. I started in Mitsubishi Parts, right? I didn't have a driver's license. Um, and, and, you know, I'm going to say this because this is one of the foundational steps, right? Like people have such, I've seen in my career doing this, there's so many excuses. Uh, people are like, oh, you didn't have a car. No, I didn't have a car, but I had self-respect. So I made sure that I made it to work no matter what. I didn't panhandle. I didn't do anything. I didn't make excuses. I, I walked. That. I would get up an hour and a half early and I would walk to work because I had too much pride to go and beg people for rides, right? So the thing was, I believed in myself. I knew the man I was going to become. And I started out on the journey, right? And the first thing that I did was um, I did that and I walked every single day from the parts department down the street to get asked the GSM for a job selling cars every day. Now, I kind of had an inside track to it, but I still had to overcome the barriers for entry. And, you know, I was just hungry. I couldn't, I couldn't, I was so hungry. It was, if I wasn't talking about it or pursuing it, I was dying, right? So I talked to them every day, boom. I went in there, I started, I sold new Mazdas. That went good. I sold used cars. I'm 21 years old. Um, and this is where the no money thing comes in. And, and I'd had a content, some content that I put out there on that. But I went in and I opened up my first, um, uh, my first uh, used car dealership and I bought my first piece of real estate. That first piece of real estate, I bought it with a lease option to buy on the back of a napkin. I ended up making millions on that piece of real estate within a very short period of time. I went, um, but, the, but the beauty of it is you're like, well, how did you do this? Well, I bought it with no cash, no capital, no nothing. Um, I just went in and I negotiated with the guy. And, that, and, and we can get into that details later because I want to cover some, some ground. But what I used to say is I would tell the story and I would call it Joey's Box of Air, right? Because all I really had was an empty box 
and a dream and the passion and the desire to go in and take the action. Because the bottom line is worst case scenario, I just lost my box, right? But if I didn't take action, then I would just be average like every other human. And that just wasn't something I wanted to do. I wanted to be um, above average. So I took those first steps and, um, and, and, that, and that was basically it. I'd use credit cards. I used credit cards. I, I, I got a little bit of money from my brother um, and, and, and what have you and, start, and started out there. That was kind of the, the initial first, the first steps. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. Two one zero zero two five four. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Um, and that was where I really learned, you know, all the phenomenal things about, you know, growing a team and 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 and, and obviously understand the finance and the compliance and all the pieces of business at a young age. Um, that's where I kind of got cut my teeth on. But I was twenty one. How did you learn? How did I learn? <laughs> Look, I'm just saying. How did you learn? Like, give me I some, ran into brick give me, walls. Give, give me, me some ways that you learned. Um, did you study? Did you oh, role play? Oh, I studied. Did I coached, you practice? Did I studied. I coached. I developed. I paid lawyers. I've spent millions of dollars on lawyers. I've spent millions of dollars on accountants, right? And through that process, and this is a very big thing, right? I don't care how old you are or what it is. When I was younger and I was 18, I had this imaginary thing that people my age knew something I didn't know. But what I realized is they didn't. And immediately, early on in the process, they would try to cascade their limiting beliefs onto me and put those self-imposed limitations on me right this is huge it, it make, is make sure make sure you explain this people that were older than him as he explained and casted his vision to the world said listen that's it's not going to happen that way correct that's wrong it's okay, wrong they now, may, they may be, and, 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 and i lost decades in growth um by allowing other people to cascade their limiting beliefs on me right and, mm -hmm. and i don't think they did it intentionally i think they had the same generational thinking issues and or that play it safe mentality or whatever i remember people saying to me like oh why don't you just go put your money into a good investment can, i'm like can i say this people that love you joey they just want you to be safe bro yeah listen these aren't bad people they didn't mean harm for no, you matter of fact the they had they wanted you to not be harmed yeah yeah they did and, and you know the easiest way to have no harm do nothing do absolutely nothing. nobody harms somebody no, that's it, not doing anything no, it's so true. It's even to the point to where I'm at right now. It was several years in the making before I decided to take my life public because all the 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 barriers, mental, once again, the limiting beliefs, the barriers for entry into going and, and building a personal brand. It wasn't that I lacked the skill, the ability, or desire, and, and, I, and I believe the future is going to show that. Um, fortunately, you know, I, I got the right mentors, right coaches, all, all that, but the, the, the self-imposed limitations piece is so huge because most of you will never get started just because you've already have some, I mean, I can literally, I, I could go talk to a hundred people right now and within five minutes I can find their limitation. And the only conversation, if I want to be a good coach or a leader is say, Hey, boom, that's it. Well, the thing is the magic happens when you can do that with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. That self-awareness, self right? Yeah. You have self, what'd you say? Self-correction. Self-correction. Yeah. That's exactly what it is because, because at the end of the day, if you can't self-correct, if you can't self-correct, you're not going to listen to anybody else. It has to be your idea, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It has to be your idea. Yeah. You have to be able to go well, in there. Self-mastery is only done by self-awareness. A lot of people aren't aware. 100%. Like, they not. don't aware that they have boundaries on themselves that other people have put, and those people are still in their life, and then boundaries that they have put. Hey guys, I would love to personally invite you to come train out with me. I'm going to be coached by my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi, June 13th, 14th, and 15th, right here in Scottsdale, Arizona. All you have to do is have trained with me at least on a training course before. So if you're watching this, if you've purchased one of my training courses before, you qualify for this. By the way, it's free. It doesn't cost you any money. It's absolutely free. So what does that mean? That means if you're watching this and you've trained with me, I'm not going to charge you anything. I want you to come train with me. I want you to come 
come out to Scottsdale, Arizona. You're going to train with me while I get coached from my coach, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi. It's going to be three days straight. This room is going to be filled with about 500 people that are raging fans of what the LA group stands for, is the core values, the standards, and winning and kicking ass. And if that's you, you're going to be with these like-minded people and you're going to be with me while I coach. I love you guys. It's something that I've never done before, but it's a private invite for those who have trained with me. So if you want to come to this, just text the number 918-210-0254. Write it down. It's very simple. 918-210-0254. 0254. Shoot me a text. Say, hey, Andy, my name's John Watson. I did buy your training course, you know, a year ago. I would love to come train with you on these three days with you and your company while you're getting coached. I'd love to spend that time with you. If that's you, boom, we'll send you over an invitation. It's limited seating, only 450 to 500 people, and then we're cutting it off. Let's get back to the video. Well, I think, and I think, I think, I think that's a really good point too, because I don't think I know, because here's the thing that humans do. You go in and you start pursuing these boundaries that you or someone else put on you. And guess what? It doesn't feel good. So you retract and you go back to the sea of sameness, right? The reality is, is when you start exploring these that boundaries, sea makes me sick. it makes me want to die. I'm seasick thinking I'm seasick, about the sea right? of sameness. It, yeah, sameness. It's the sea of sameness, right? You know? So the thing is, is when you go in through the process and you start feeling those pains, you know, you, you got to lean into it, right? And you have to be excited about it. That would be the one of the biggest things I can share with anybody is, is that whenever you don't know how to do something and you're trying to solve a problem, you're basically taking what you don't know and trying to make it reality. The magic happens when you can sit down with somebody like Andy Elliott and you're like, Andy, how do I, how do I, build a personal brand and I can take all my experience and everything I know and I can be honest and be like you know what Andy I don't know a damn thing about building a personal brand and I have to be I have to be humble and I have to and I have to be able to put everything that I know all my accomplishments and achievements aside and be able to pursue that you know and that's and that's a superpower because I have the ability to do that because yeah, you know? your ego will make you think, you know, I don't know this, which will make you quit on something. I'm not quitting. Because you got to where you got by fighting through hard things. That's Absolutely. How, that's how you got to where Absolutely. you're at. Absolutely. Yeah, and then now you want to go through something else that's going to be hard again. You're going to have to go to the same shit. I'm excited. But hopefully this time faster. And I think that how you go through things faster is be willing to fail quicker. Yeah. Okay, like just putting yourself out there, you're going to realize real quick, number one, hate is a trophy. Losers don't get hate, only winners get it. And when you step out there and you go to try to help people, you're going to have people that have never helped anyone in their life go, I don't like you. That guy's a fraud. That's bullshit. They ain't never helped anyone in their life. They never helped no one. And guess what's for absolutely but, certain? They weren't thinking about me before well, but, I did it. At least now they're thinking about me. Well, but now <laughs> you know? that you're stepping out there and you're breaking the boundaries that they've put on you, they don't like that. And that's the reason why I always tell people it's easier to find people that are new in your life when you go on a new journey that will support you than asking the old people that have been with you your whole life to support you. Absolutely. This is a really good thing, right? So one of the things that I've learned, and this is about, you know, millionaires, right? One of the things I've learned about millionaires, if I find other pe millionaires that are have within the same sphere as me, it's more of a competitive thing. But if I get around someone that is dominating and crushing comparison to where I'm at, these people are the genuine coaches, mentors, the genuine relationships, all these things. The fact of the matter is, is people that are your same, it's too competitive. You need to get people that are further along in, that, in the that process. That want to see you win. They want to see you win. Yeah, Absolutely. I was, I was just talking about this yesterday. If you take two guys, they're both making two million. One's trying to compare himself to the other the entire time. Yes. They literally are competing. You take one or they're guy, trying to steal whatever they can from. Yeah, you're taking one guy that's making two hundred million, and that guy's making two million. The guy that's making two hundred million is like, dude, I'm gonna get you to two hundred million. Yeah, I'm gonna get you. I'm they gonna talk get you. to you totally different. They talk to you totally different. Yeah, and and because they've done it, they know what it is, and those people are very direct. They don't assume that this is what you should do. They'll tell you exactly what to do because that's how they got to two hundred million. And the cool thing is, is the art of achievement, right, and the art of fulfillment. I think both of those are super important. And I think that in anyone that's watching this, you can probably tell everybody that there's a lot of time in your life you've probably achieved, but you probably, like you talked about, you let your fitness go for a while. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, so so let's talk about some of that, right? Like these guys, these gals that are going for this big life right now, that are going to change a lot of people's lives, that are, that are learning in business and they're, and they're pouring out all this intensity in business. They also must maintain these other areas 
because for what you let go in 10 years in one area of your life, even though you gain here, you could have kept both the whole time if it would have been on a priority and on the forefront of your mind. And if you don't, you're going to get 10 years ahead and then you're going to turn around and it's going to take you years to dig out that 10 year mistake. Um, back up, like if you don't pay attention to your marriage, but you go make a lot of money. Listen, at the end of the day, even when you get all that money, there's a chance that you're going to have a divorce. You and your wife are separated. She's going to do some stupid shit. You're going to do some stupid shit. You guys are going to be together. The whole goal to marry her was to take her with you in this big, beautiful life. But people don't take care of their marriages. They don't take care of their relationships. They don't take care of their kids. They don't take care of their uh, health. They, they just focus on this business road. I think that we got to tell this new generation or generations now that are even our age, Dude, wake your ass up Absolutely. and be elite, be elite, you know? And so again, when you're around people that are doing big shit, they remind you that, dude, this ain't about just making money, man. Success is not income. Success is impact. And when you are the best version of you, you impact more people and you make more money. Absolutely. So for me, one of the things that, you know, I went through... Let me try to run through this. So 2019 comes around and I said, I said, it, 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 and this is, I'm giving you real accounts and I'm going to move as fast as I can for sake of time. I cried out to the universe and I said, there has to be more, right? It was 2019. Now I have other stories, other, other cycles in my life that I did the same thing. This is not my first time going through this process. This process works, right? And then I'm going to, and I'm going to, and I'm going to talk about the, the developing and the skill and what I've learned, and I'm going to try to give you some frameworks, some actionable steps that you can take to create massive change in your life. And most of you won't make it past this one. You'll fail right here, right? And, and, and you can't blame anyone but yourself. 2019, I went, I went in and I said, um, there has to be more, right? And I cried out to the universe because I'm making money. Everything's there. And, you know, it, it's not, uh, it's not, it's, I don't want fun and exciting. I'm looking, I didn't realize what it was, but ultimately what I ended up achieving was joy, peace, and fulfillment. And then now I'm back to fun and exciting again, plus joy, peace, and fulfillment. Mm. So the thing is 2019, cry out to the universe to January. I'm sorry. So January, 2019 was cry out the universe. Boom. The instant thing that came to me was audit your circle of influence. So I went in January 1, 2019, I said that anything that's not within alignment that gets me where to go, I'm dropping it. Boom. In an instant, it was done. I didn't, it wasn't no big deal. It wasn't war against the other people. I had lifelong friends that I spoke to and I said, hey man, listen, I've been watering my garden. I've been waking up in the morning. I watered it early, staying up late. I've been pulling weeds in it. You can't swing into my life and expect to get the same level, the same level of activity when you haven't been doing these things with yours. So I audited my, I audited my circle of influence. Right. That was the absolute first thing that I did. Right. And then what happened was, is it kind of, it kind of, it kind of went in there and I was like, what can I, what can I, cause one thing that I know is that, you know, you know, sacrifice is the payment that we make to honor our commitments. Right. So I was like, I need to open up capacity. I need to have more. So I stopped drinking. Right. I stopped drinking. That was it. I was like, you know, 2019, I stopped drinking. And then that took me on another journey, right? And I went through the whole process and I started looking at it. And keep in mind, during this whole time, I have a loving, romantic, affectionate relationship with my wife. She's the, the best human I've ever met in my entire life, without a doubt. So I've never lacked anything in that area. But I aspired to be more for her, right? So that was a big deal. I wanted to be more, for, more, more there because she had given me so much at that point you know, on an emotional level, right? Uh, she loved me for me, right? Not for me. I, 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 let me stand corrected because I do not like that concept. She loved me the way that I wanted to be loved, right? And to me, that was the most important thing. So I went through that whole cycle. I audited my circle of influence, but then you go in and I started really reflecting. I became a seriously avid reader, right? And I went in and going through growth and development and so the circle of influence was there then there was the mindset issue right i had a lot of self-imposed um limitations then learning how to cope after not drinking and i don't want to say cope like oh my god this 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 but the fact of the matter is, is if you're drinking three four drinks you know three four times a week you're not actually processing at your highest level your highest frequency right you're you're just numb right so you never got the 
dig through. And you keep knocking that edge off you. Yeah, because it's like people are like, oh, man, you know, and, 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 and you do a good thing where you talk about dancing and not drinking. It's like, you know how, you know, sometimes you go into a room, there's 100 people there, you're in there, and you just want to take a drink off, to have a drink to take the edge off. Yeah, well, guess what? When I stop drinking, there is no more edge right now. The edge is gone. That concept and theory has been gone, right? So moving through... Moving through that, the best thing I would say is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? To your point, what you were talking about. I found that Maslow's and all my years of experience in both developing myself as an individual and developing the business, you can, you can equate them to the both. Maslow starts out and he talks out like food, clothing, and shelter, right? And then he goes into, uh, I think it's love, romance, and intimacy. And then the final step of it is self-actualization, right? It's kind of like people want to skip steps, right? And to your thing, talking about the foundational steps, you cannot get to where you want to go without, when you look at your circle of influence and then you look at your significant other, and most of the time to look at your significant other in order to look at what you speak to, you're going to have to improve yourself, right? Like trying to solve each other's problems just isn't going to work, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to become more and then they become more and then you become more together, right? Yeah, you show them what more looks like. You show them what more looks like, right? So going in there, and if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you move down further down the process and you have poor relationships, not just, you know, your circle of influence, your poor, poor quality friendships, uh, poor uh, uh, relationship with your significant other. Um, what happens is, is you get back in here and you get into your career and you're getting these wins and that foundation crumbles. You have to have, and what most people find is most people try to go and blame the other person. If the other person was so much to blame, then why are you still with them? right? The reality is, is you have to become what you want to attract, right? You, mm -hmm. you absolutely do. So only way. So I, so I went through that whole thing. So I think the Maslow's for some of you, like we can't go in about it all in here today. There's not enough time, but for those of you that really desire, you know, the total game of life, when I talk about the money, I want love, romance, and, and intimacy. I want, I want, I want to be able to have, you know, I want financial, I want financial success, on every level. I want, I want to have lifestyle goals. I want to have, you know, my faith intact and everything. I want to have a strong foundation and know that I'm, that I'm correct within myself, right? And how I'm living my life. You know, I want to be able to, t I want it all, right? So if you go in there, you know, I want to be a good father. You know, I don't want to be a good father. I want to be the best father in the world, right? Um, so and when- you know, you know what else you want to be? Mm -hmm. And this is something that you're really on a journey for is you want to be free in your mind. I don't hear anybody talk about that. People say, I want to, what do you want? I want to be financially free. You know what I want to be? I want to be free in my mind where thoughts don't control me. Abs no, you're absolutely right. Every thought, most of them are a lie. 100%. And this is why people never make it. The number one skill that I believe that any individual can learn is to control their thoughts. Because if you can't control them, they control you. And you're finished. No, you're absolutely you're And absolutely. no one else ever took you out. No, and, and I when I was when I was younger, um, and this would be a good thing for the young men and women here, specifically for the men. I can't relate as much to the women, but you know, I consider a boy to be anyone under thirty, right? On an emotional level to what you're speaking of, because I ref I referenced that to myself. I thought I was a man, but when I reflect back Yeah, yeah. Men you know mature much later than women sure. in most cases. An 18-year-old girl is like a 30-year-old man. Yeah, yeah. So when I went through that whole thing, I would go ahead and I'd be like, if I feel it, it's got to be true, right? Well, the thing is, is what I've learned now is, and now how I coach myself to your point, being absolutely free in your mind, is intellect over emotion, Joey. Intellect over emotion. Sleep on it. Intellect over emotion. Sleep on it. Intellect well, over emotion. And, and I want to tell you something, right? Like, So, like, I know a goal for you is to build your personal brand absolutely. right now, right? Um, inside there may be something that says I'm wasting my time on the outside. You're like, I'm going to build this. I'm going to prove everybody wrong. I'm going to build this, but there's something on the inside that goes, I don't think you're going to build this. Oh no, I don't have that. No, no, no. But it lives in there. And, and, and what it does is it, it makes people sick. Oh, if you have it apps, there's no doubt. There's it, no, yeah. Well, it lives in everyone. And, and what happens is brain. Yeah, but but, right? but well, but it but it's a thought though. It's just it's just one simple thought. For some reason, you're about to go record a lot of content in a minute. You may think maybe I'm not ready. Oh, for sure. Well, There's no question. Well, watch. So so, but this you are ready. Okay. That the fact is is that's a lie. You are ready, but you think I'm not ready. You'll be more ready afterwards. Right, but right? but but 
you are ready. You've always been ready. You know what you know, and that's why you have the life you have. But there's this thing that says you're not ready. One not ready thought. I want you to just, if anybody's mature enough to understand this, one not ready thought, once that story exists, one lap, it takes one lap in your brain, immediately it's going to overlay it again with another story that you're not ready again. And then overlay it with another story that you're not ready. And this thought starts to build momentum. And it builds momentum in your mind. And then all of a sudden it starts to make you sick. And then it starts to make you doubt. And then it starts to make you fear. And then it starts to make you rethink. Dude, this, if you can feel this and say, that ain't true. As quick as possible, that ain't true. You're the most dangerous human on planet Earth. That was how I built what I built. Because I said, this ain't true. This ain't true. And by the way, a lot of my past is totally true. I was not a great person because I allowed my thoughts to control me to believe I wasn't a good person. So I didn't act like a good person. If I tell my kid he's not a good kid, he'll end up being a bad kid. You may not have been a good person at that time in your life, but you're a good person. Well, but inside my head, I have everyone telling me how life's supposed to go. So I'm programmed. I'm doing this. And once I realize, you know, when Andrew Tate talks about the matrix, when all these people talk about society and don't conform and all this, what they're just trying to say is that, look, I mean, we live in the United States, okay? Like nobody has it easier than us. It's just the truth. You could become a billionaire if you wanted to, if you could just control your damn thoughts. Yeah. And, and so God gave us a mind and a heart. Obviously, people want to be around people that have great hearts and, you know, they can feel that your intent is good. And then also your minds are capable of so much, but only most of us only use like 1% of our brain. It's just the truth. And especially since we're in the technology era and these phones are everywhere, we wake up on a screen, we go to bed on a screen. So if you wake up on a screen, you go to bed on a screen, you're in a cloud. Like, like, let's just tell the truth. You're in a cloud. Yeah, I remove, I remove, I do the best I can to remove all, all distractions. I don't watch TV at all. But like, do you, do you see though, the yeah. war, the war yeah. is the phone. The war is lies and the war is, is people not being able to slow down enough to, to, to be self-aware enough to who they are to understand like, like this thought ain't true. I'm a badass. And when you do that, that's when it activates and you annihilate an industry. And anyone can do this. And so that's why I tell people, I'm like, dude, I'm looking for the greatest overcomers in the world to just get control of these simple things. And you have to train and be around good people that will teach you how this works, right? Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. And and anyways, what we just said, that could be sold for a million dollars. Just that little deal. We could just clip that little piece of the podcast and say, we'll sell you the secret for a million dollars right here. And somebody would pay a million for that and they would make billions of dollars. Question is, can you do that? That's the play. We just gave the play. Everything else is adversity, hardship, doubters, you know, other people not believing in you, which means you can never not believe. Uh, doing the work, executing. Yeah, doing the, doing the work is kind of how you work through that, You're right? a worker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love to see you execute, man. In, and by the way, imperfect action is better than perfect action. Most people think things got to be perfect before they do them. How about I suffered we ju- from that a long time. Yeah, how about we just start? And, and what I love about your deal is you got a big business. And you may say, well, I got a big business. I got everything. You know what? Let, let the world watch you mess up. How about that? Listen, let I'm going to make show you what it's like. To, let them show you what it's like to overcome it. Well, how right? in the hell will I want to be you if I think you're perfect? Does anybody want to be like anybody that's had it easy and perfect? I'm going to ask you a question. If you got a guy over here that fell, 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 then came back and won, would you want to watch his movie? Or would you want to watch this guy over here that his daddy gave him a bunch of money when he was born? He had an easy life, never had a problem, and literally had a silver spoon in his mouth. Nobody's think, interested in any of this shit. I think any of the people, if anybody was to go and find the people who know Joey Batista, I think every single person that knows me, they know one thing's for absolute certain. Mm-hmm. They know I'm going to overcome because they've seen me overcome adversity that they would, that, you know, I'm, the way I say the story about myself is I'm comfortable in places that most people would call hell, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm, like I'm willing to do. Well, Tim Grover says you got to go into hell. Either hell's going to come to you or you're going to go to it. Just, just, and by the way, be in the light in the darkness is a beautiful place to be if you're a light in the light you won't stand out but if you're a light in the darkness you just glow 
And I think this that's world's the hard, pretty dark right I now. I think that's the hard. I think that's one of the hardest things is really like that maturity and age and getting through that boyish years. I think one of the biggest things that it does is really being comfortable in your own skin. I mean, you know, it didn't matter what I did. The opinions mm -hmm. were going to be there anyways, but the impact wouldn't be right. Like now I'm at a point to where every single person that spends my belief is, is if you spend time with me, I'm going to return you back to society, to your family. I'm going to make you a better human, way better person. right? Like, mm -hmm. it's just the way it is. Like, I don't, I don't. You know, you're, I'm going to get what I get anyways. Yeah, right? you're, you're living a life now you know? to change others' lives. <clears throat> Absolutely. But, yeah. And it's kind of like it's, it's, it's a really big passion project. And it's also, you know, there's so many different things on entrepreneurship. You know, oh, guys become billionaires because they focus on one thing, and this is true, or diversify, or this or that. So people are reaching out to me like, oh, they see me trying to build, you know, work, not trying, mm -hmm. building a mm -hmm. brand. See, those, that word selection support. Well, your brand's right? always lived. You just never told it. Your story's always been there. You just never talked about it. No, you're you're absolutely you're absolutely you know, right. Because you know why? See, you everybody has a brand. Everybody has a story. It's just once you get it out there on the internet, be ready to be crucified your first year because everyone when they see you doing something that they could have done that they didn't have the courage to do, they're going to hate you. Well, I got a full I got a full-blown thing that I do to open up capacity for the people that when I go back in my life, people are like, you know, you talk about, I see you talking about your past a lot and we all have a past, right? Um, everybody has everything. But one of the things that's for certain for me, like, um, I didn't, I, when people are like, Hey, you know, you need to, don't forget, Hey, don't forget where you came from. You need to remember your past. Right. For me, see, I forget my past, right? Mm -hmm. Cause those people that you're talking about that are hating, that are doing whatever they want to do, that's for them to remember. So they have something to do. I don't care about my past. That doesn't define who I am or where I'm going or well, what I'm going to be. It's made you who you are today. Absolutely. And yeah, the thing if you didn't go do the, if you, anything that you've been through shapes you for the next part of your I'm life. I'm tested, right? Like yeah. I've, you know, and I think uh, it's, it's Jordan, Jordan Peterson who talks about um, how, uh, you know, being a dangerous man that's contained is better than, you know, than, than a man that's simply nothing or whatever his, to the if, point if that he we makes. Were, if we were going to go kick ass, would you rather go, kick ass with someone that's been through a hundred wars absolutely or someone that's never been to war absolutely i I'll damn sure don't want to go in a gunfight with someone that's never been in no a war. i want I, I want to go in with someone that's had a hundred gun wars they've watched people get killed things have happened they've been shot they've shot the wrong people sometimes shot people shit's happened and because of all that, they got wisdom and experience that I trust. And they chose to walk on a higher ground, right? Because it's always about choices, mm -hmm. right? They intentionally, consciously, like for your life, for my life, we made choices to walk on a higher ground, right? And the thing is, is anybody can come in and they can pass judgment any way that they want. But the fact of the matter is they're not making the contribution to society mm -hmm. that we're making, right? So the thing is, and even though they're successful, and even though they have a little bit of this, and even though they have a little nothing. bad, they're not making the contribution, right? They're, it's, it's just not happening. So I like to ask, how many lives have you changed? And, and when you ask that, if people have to think, they have a problem. They're selfish. Leaders are selfless. They set out the day every morning to think, who can I change today? Who can I affect today? You know, like you grow past money. You grow, absolutely, absolutely. like you outgrow it. And well, then, you also become confident in it, right? Like it's just a byproduct of what you do, right? Yeah. Like you, it's just a byproduct. You know, it's like, my thing is, is like, you know, and, and one of the things hard about what was hard initially, but I was like, dude, anybody who knows Joey Batista, who knows what I'm about, they're gonna tell the story better than me. They're gonna say, man, that dude's a real dude, man. Like, yeah, he's a tested gunslinger, right? Like he's gonna do it, but he's he's got a real heart. He's a man of his word, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's gonna tell you how it is, but you can count on him, mm -hmm. right? He's predictable, I love that. right? You know what I mean? So that was the hardest thing for me, but like you said, the story's already been told, right? Like, sure, was I always at my best my entire life? No. But that's why I want to share my story because I want to share my story and I want to share the lessons that I've learned because I want people to say, if he can do it, I can do it better. And at the same point in time, you know, I want them to see how real it is. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just a, I'm just a blue collar guy, right? Like, I'm not somebody, but I had a, the, the passion and, and, and now there's other things that are available. The knowledge, the information, the coaching, the mentors. Totally. We did this generation with no coaches or mentors. When you were in the car dealership, when you were in the car business, how many years were you actually in retail? 23 years. In 23 years, you were in retail. 
right? Yeah. How many years were your previous, how many, your previous, your first 15 years in the business, did anyone ever come to you and talk about being a good leader? Never. Never. I read a Zig Ziglar book and I watched Grant Cardone cassette tapes. My, 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 my whole existence. I, and, and until as I got older, by the way, no one ever even used the word leader. The word's not even used they anywhere. Use boss or manager. Yeah, but but it, but the thing because was the it idea. Was, it was about being in charge of someone. The never idea, about leading someone. It wasn't about leading and growth and development. And it's like one of the things that when I look back and I look at the people who didn't and they didn't know how to do it. Once again, it wasn't their fault. They didn't know how to do it. They got taught to but be a boss. People want to grow and scale companies, right? And the thing that I learned in going and trying and growing and scaling is this. The people are going to build the business. I get no points as an entrepreneur for me being good at the thing, right? Like how good I can sell cars, how good I can do marketing, how good I can manage compliance, how good I can, you know, lead the team or coach or develop. It's that part of it on an individual basis. But the question is, is can I develop ethical leaders that can go ahead and make and ha that, that can make the critical decisions to ethically, compliantly, and profitably run a company, right? And the fact of the matter is, you cannot get there without leadership. Because how am I going? I'm going to give. It's like what you're giving here at the Elliott Group. You're giving everybody here at the Elliott Group something they can't get anywhere else. And I don't even think they know how much it is because you make it look so easy. And, and not just you. Ian, Evan, Jackie, the whole team, you guys have created such a culture here that they don't realize what it is. But the greatest gift that you can give a human is to make them better if they're interested in that. That's how the game changes. That's how I keep the people on my team. When they come in, they know they're getting better. So the leadership piece to that point is such a big deal because if you want to be a good entrepreneur, you want to buy, I'm going to install the executive and I'm going to do this. I'm going to allocate. So the goal of an entrepreneur should be at the end of the day, you want to be an investor and you want to deploy capital. You want to install the executive. You want to have the leadership team, the executive management team, and they grow the business, right? That's the end game. But the critical piece to it is you have to be able to develop leaders and it amazes me like to the 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 lack of leadership and talking about it to people who haven't been exposed to it it's like you're crazy but when you get the people who actually grow and get the feeling of getting better mm -hmm. that's where your loyal soldiers and allies and the that's where the next generation of you know just amazing entrepreneurs and leaders is coming from right mm -hmm. it's coming from cultures like this at the Elliott Group, you know, like what you guys have here. I mean, there's so many amazing people that that, that are going to come out of this. Like, they don't even know what's going to happen. I bet you, I bet you of the percentage that it's going to have something really amazing happen with their life, even more, because it's already amazing. Mm -hmm. But I would bet that they don't even know how amazing it can be, right? You they, know? They can't comprehend they it. They can't comprehend it because it's so... But we see it. Of course. Yeah. And by the way, when when you're in an environment like that, where it's hard to see the end because it's so special. It makes you just want to give everything you have. Absolutely. Yeah. That's like coming in here yesterday. You guys were nice enough to let me do a sales meeting with the team. And, you know, dude, coming in here, talking to these, I could talk to these guys all day long. The culture here so is so amazing. To learn. Yeah. They're so hungry to learn. Everybody's got the notepads out. Yeah. Right. Everybody's they, really, it's a stage for a teacher to teach. It's, it's like, it's, it's a dream. Mm -hmm. It's uh, a dream, right? Uh, to go, I mean, uh, Cause, I would say that. Yeah, it's every everyone everyone in here is not the is not this isn't the normal reality of a group that you walk into. Groups can be much more challenging than this, right? Like you have to work the crowd harder to get engagement. Well, I walk into a company anytime I walk into a company, and I can tell real quick whenever I go to talk to someone how well of a job the leadership's been doing, teaching the team to give whoever's speaking or talking a stage to really pour their heart out on. Okay. So I tell my people, I say, listen That's to me, good. anytime somebody will share any information with you, the first thing that they're going to do, they know a lot or else they wouldn't have been there to even speak to you, but they have a lot in determining your eyes, your posture, the way that you look at them, the way that you onboard them before they speak will determine how much information that they know they're willing to share with you. That's kind of that. That's I like that's that. Dangerous you talk, yeah, you, no, you know, but you know, what's funny is I haven't been intentional in saying it like that, but it's kind of like the, the thing that I said when I'm like, you know, thank you for letting me give you 
my money, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you automatically pour more into me, but that's really good. I actually, I'm going to communicate that message. Yeah, tell it's going to help me. It's going to help me. Yeah. Tell better. your team, say, Hey guys, yeah. do you know how much I know? And sometimes I don't share it all with you because when I look at you, it didn't seem like you want to know it all. And this is true. Say, so your eyes tell me how much you're ready to learn. And so it's just important that anytime someone's talking to you, know that they know something that you need to know. So whether it's one on one or one on 500, just give them the eyes that they know that you're ready to receive the best of everything they have. And these people will pour into you differently and better than you than anyone else. Tim Grover, every, every person that's ever came here to our events, because our people are so well trained to under, to learn, once they look in the audience, they're like, dude, I want to give more to your people than I've given to any of nobody, people. nobody, nobody has what you guys have yeah, here. Well, it's because of stage, right? You look at people and you can tell that, you know, some of them are still questioning why they're there. You know, they're thinking about like, you know, what do I got to do after this? You know, and it just makes you be like, oh, okay, well, let me deliver some key points. Hopefully anybody listening, it'll make an impact. But when you walk into a room, this is a secret for everybody. And it's one-on-one, -on -one, even me and you. I'm like, Joey, number one, thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Anything that you think that I need to know, I'm a sponge. I'm open-minded. Let it roll. Then you're like, oh, okay. You want that? It's like, bam, that's different, you know? Yeah, that's totally different because, you know, because there is that certain thing like what you're saying. You're like, you don't want to be offensive and you don't want to be, you know, well, you don't want you're not wanna... really sure how far you can go with that person. So, yeah. so people need to give you permission. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's and like... I, have, I have become better. I've learned to ask for permission, right? Like mm -hmm. if I really feel like it's, if I feel like, if I care enough about the human being or the circumstance to where I'm willing to push the relationship to the edge, yeah. Then I'll ask for or, or, permission. Or to give more with you than I've given to others. Hey, I'd like to have per, ask for permission. You seem like a great guy. Can I give? Can I pour into you a little more than I do with others? That's a good way. Yeah, to I'd say love that. for you to do that. You always got the best okay. ways of saying it. Andy. Yeah, your because word I got... selection's pretty damn good, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's called it. weaponized. Woo, and our words I like are the weapons. way you say it. Yeah. I'm like, man, this dude is good. Yeah, you and then me? you got to kind of smile at him while you do it. Like, <laughs> hey, if you ever made an exception, it would probably yeah. be just this one. I time. thought I was good, dude, but when I see the way you do it, I'm like, man, I got, I got, I got way. I got. I mean, I have been inactive, right? Like, yeah. I'm like, I got a ways to go. This guy has a. It's and, and and the thing is, it's not about being good with words, right? It's about you've studied and become really good yeah. at conveying your message to make that impact that you want to make, right? Because when you can communicate and use those words, communications and, and the key have that, to everything. Your ability. I always say that it's a two part equation, right? Because I've had people. One of my biggest things that. I've had people say to me in my life is, you talk to me like I'm stupid. I, and my, my response to that is, is no. I talk to you like you're smart. You behave like you're stupid, mm, right? I love and, that. And, the th and the thing is, is because I believe in you, now all of a sudden, I'm a bad person, right? And the thing is, that, so, so there's one half of the equation to where you always have to be looking as a leader, how can I better communicate my message, mm -hmm. right? And then the other thing is, is the student, the applicant, the mentee has to be able to be coachable, mm -hmm. right? So the thing is, I think when you're going and you're building a company or if you're building a team or if you're coaching and developing, it's an art of knowing when to pull out, when to pour more into, and do you have the right? Is it you? Do you need to develop? Because the person that you're working with is always going to want to think it's you, right? Why mm -hmm. they can't get done. That's like that. That's the classic lizard brain, right? As you're pulling them along the process but the other part of the equation is is you fighting to improve your message i mean that's one thing like when i hear you talk and i hear you deliver the message i'm like man this dude is just so good at it and it could be taken for like man he's a good salesman or he's a good closer and yes you're all those things right like you're a great closer right phenomenal best that ever did it right but the thing is is i look at it when i see it i'm like man if i could improve the listen learn from him and do these little things i could really have a bigger greater impact right mm -hmm. so that's one of the big things like when i mean that well, I, why i really that, enjoy sitting the, in there well that's the way i operate so the same thing you're doing with me is the same thing that i do with everyone and anything that i ever see ever even just one little thing i write it down i memorize it i've got it once i see it write it down on a piece of paper and then i memorize it and now i own it and, I and, store that, and, and that's all anybody's ever done, and right? It's just like a, it's like you ever, like my son plays Call of Duty, right? The, the, and they're collecting guns. I collect words. I collect thoughts, thinking patterns, interruptions. I, I 
I collect all these things so that in any way, shape or form that I need to get through to someone to get them to understand what I think they need to understand, I need to have those weapons. If I need to blow it, blow up a door, I need the grenade launcher. You know, if I need to be a sniper and take a freaking thousand mile shot, you know, like I need, I need that gun. Like, I'm always thinking like, do I have, am I weaponized enough for this individual, for this conversation, for this situation? You know, and I just don't, I don't ever want to be in a spot where I can't help someone create a breakthrough when they need it. When people are having a meltdown, I want to be like, dude, I got this. And I, I think know, the exactly. number one reason why you have so much impact is because we all, every people don't want to be consciously aware of it, right? But it's all the total game, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, you have to have it all in order. Success is a feeling, right? Like, if yep. you go, you know, success isn't something you look up in the book. Your version of it could be different than mine. Mm-hmm. But some of us, you know, our faith could be a higher level priority. Our, you know, our fitness could. But all of us require something from everywhere in order to have that feeling of success, right? Mm-hmm. And you have to do it. You got to have a healthy relationship. And that's one of the things that I think that really and truly is awesome about what you do with Jackie, you know? And this is one of the things that's, you know, I never had, and this is something that's really good for, like, for you and Jackie, just to kind of give credit and show you how it's changed my life and my, me and my wife's life and my, and my brother's life and, and families. And, and some of it's been, you know, I kind of been the gatekeeper. So I've kind of, said, hey, you know, this is how we do business and this is what we do and we can have the wives here and we're going to do this and we've kind of all agreed on it and that's been the thing. Well, one of the things that going in and, you know, living a big life is and what leadership has taught me as I've developed as a leader is you got to bring everybody along, right? So when I came in here and I saw how you guys did it and having Jackie involved, that's when I immediately realized, I was like, you know what, now's my chance. So we came, we came to the, the, mm-hmm. the brotherhood thing And we've had our wives in 20 groups or something like that. But that was the first time ever, right, that that basically was, hey, we've made a conscious decision as a family that we're changing, rewriting policy, we're rewriting history, and we're going to go ahead and change how we actively engage the wives Mm -hmm. in the business, right? And then that opens up a whole other world. But I give you guys thanks for that because I can tell you my wife's never been – you know, now all of a sudden she's at, now all of a sudden she's asking me to help me do this. She's like, "What well, do you need to do this? You know, your grammar's wrong on here." I'm like, "Well, you know." You well, and that? the deal yeah. is, is that you made her feel important, and she is very important. And I should make her feel important because mm-hmm. she is very important, right? And and yeah. she's the most important person to me in my yeah. network because you know. She so. ju- we just we just sometimes as guys we do a bad job reminding them. So, saying it means nothing. Showing it means everything. And so when you take them with you. They actually see with our actions because guys, you know, we like the, the head, we like the the headlines, you know, like what we're doing. Women like the details. Who's going with you? Am I am I there? I'm not there. Okay. It's and you're, it's like yeah, but you know you're you know you you're there, but you're just I know. It's like they're not dumb. No, and I think that you they have know like- us very well. So my wife has to go everywhere with me because she is everything to me, and I have been twenty times better with her than I was ever without her. It's just that I was never really with her in business. And then once I started to, I was like, holy crap. Like, I mean, she's an animal now. Yeah, but right? I'm like, in, I'm like, in, but in like, why did I ever not do it? Well, I know I didn't do it because everyone else didn't do it. And the biggest problem is it's that people... It's kind of like that status quo. Yeah, it's like, like this it's way it's like, always been. Yeah, it's like cup. this way it's always been. I was like, dude, this is stupid. And now we're like changing the world by saying, hey, make sure you bring your family with you. Because once they're with you, they'll support you. They won't let you quit. They'll hold you accountable. Like, she's holding you accountable. Your grammar's wrong. And you may be like, come on, babe, quit, quit. Hey, I'm not busting your balls. You're a freaking pro. Like, I'm on your team. No, oh, yeah. That, You're like, that, oh, yeah, that's same. right. Like, wait a minute. My wife's job is to protect me. She wants to see me win. She knows how much money I've invested in this. She wants to make sure that I'm the best. Babe, thanks for being freaking so awesome. No, and it is. My wife is, my wife is you a know? huge support staff. And, and, yeah, you but know. now she's supporting you because you're bringing her with you. No, 100%. Well, and the and thing she knows is, she's coming important. there and seeing it, she's like, you know, we, I, I want a life like this. Yeah, and, right? you're, and, you know, and she's getting that life. It, it, yeah. she's, get, she's, get, she's getting that yeah. life. So it's, it's, been, it's, been a, uh, it, it's been good. So thank you. Yes. Well, right? every, thank Jackie, too, right? Because well, she's a good, great example for it. Well, but thank you for being a good student because I was a good student that learned this, and now I'm teaching it to you, and then you're going to teach it to millions of others, and then we're just going to change the whole world. So, I told um, you to be the most coachable human on the planet. I already right? know. <laughs> That's why I tell people. Whenever I find someone that I look up to, I always say, you can count on me to be the most coachable person you've ever had. And I said, I know time will tell, but I'm going to spend more money with you. I'm going to do, I'm going to outgrow you, but I'll give you all the credit when we're done. 
okay, because you were the one that taught me. So everything you know, pour it into me. I'll be your greatest student. If you are a mentor to others, you need someone to say, if you listen to what I say, I can make you like him. I want you to point me out. I want to be your example of how high someone can go. And that's really my goal right now. For my mentors that have mentored me, I've outgrown them. And I just want them to know that I am their greatest example of what a student can look like in their program. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so now I'm like looking for my, I'm like, hey, you see this guy? If you want to be great, you can be like this guy. Now I'm looking for those students in, in my game. I'm going to be that guy for you. Yeah, but, and then you're going to find you. your guy in Absolutely. your game. Absolutely. And I think, I think as a mentor, we're always looking for like, who's our greatest student? You know, and we want them all to be our greatest. But at the end, there's that psycho competitor. Like I ultra want to be the greatest. And they're just always there. They always show up. They're always learning. And they just, they do everything you say and they outgrow you because they listened. You know, it kind, of, it kind of, you know, one of my biggest thing why I love coaching people is because, you know, it's selfish in the aspect of it feeds my soul mm. to let me know how good I am. And yeah. it keeps me sharp, you know, so well, it fulfills you. And it fulfills me. And if that's the reward you get from helping people is that you feel amazing. I think that's called love. So that's great. You love people and you love seeing people win. And if we just could make everybody this way, like it would be over. So, um, guys, super important. And I'll make sure, you know, that I drop this many times through. Um, if you're not following my man here on Instagram, I just beat his butt and told him he needed to get on social media. So if you liked everything he taught you, go give him a follow on Instagram. Where do they find you on Instagram? Joey Batista. Yeah, Batista, spell that. B as in boy, A-T-T-I-S-T-A. Um, there you go. I'm also going to be working on some things. I'm going to be doing some free value things here in the coming months. So follow me now, and there'll be some really nice things coming in the future. Yeah, he's dropping some really cool stuff. So, guys, go give him a follow uh, on Instagram, Joey Batista. Make sure you DM him if you loved it. Drop some comments below. And, guys, let's kick some ass. Have a great day. Joey, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you, man. Okay, love you guys. See you in the next podcast. Let's go. I just want to stay bad, stay mad, shit by my shoulder because they Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.